Hi, welcome to Maria's Ideas Art. This is episode 23, the 10-minute tutorial for our volunteer cable TV show here in Pittsburgh, Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. You can follow me on YouTube, Maria's Ideas Art. You could follow me on Face page for this show, Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint or Maria's Ideas Art. So each episode, that I produce and co-host with my friend Alan Levine um, is designed to complement or be inspired by our guest. And our guest for episode 23, 2004, is uh, someone from the National Aviary. So these are F2 of the penguins, African penguins, that live at the National Aviary. I always work from their photographs. And this is what we're going to paint. All right. So first let me say um and thank you for being here if you're if you're returning thank you so much if this is the first time welcome uh so what i'm going to show you here is just how to draw this on your canvas or your paper or your board but let me first say there are a couple different ways you can do this now typically in the studio we start with the blank canvas we use the canvas boards because of the way we film and fit on our table. This is 11. We typically use 11 by 14. Now, for time's sake, we don't usually paint the background all first, let it dry, which is pretty common when you're painting with acrylics. You work from the back to the front. We like to just start everything at the same time. So I'm going to draw this on the canvas. This is what we're going to do when we do our show. After we have it drawn, I have this one already masked off. I just used painter's tape and I just stuck it down on top of the penguins so that as we paint the background, I won't cover up the penguins. Now, what you can easily do is you paint your background first. If you want this nice blended underwater vibe going, it's a lot easier in if you do it all at once without trying to go around. If you're trying to go around an object, it's very difficult to blend and get this nice gradation from dark to light. So we could certainly do that first, let it dry, but we only have so much time to film each episode. So we are going to do it this way. We have, we're going to have our penguins drawn and we're just going to paint on top of this. And then when we're done, painting will peel the tape up and that will reveal the penguins underneath. But like I said, you can paint your background first. Let it dry really good, whatever colors you wanted to use. These We do use acrylics. And then you can draw the way I'm showing you here on your painted canvas. So with that in mind, if you are, if pretend this is already your blue background or you already have that, you really don't want to use anything that would um, mess too much with the paint. So I'm using just a dark pencil just to show you here, but I would use either chalk. You could use white chalk or any color chalk, a watercolor pencil, probably a lighter color that shows up, something that shows up on your paint and something that will melt. The watercolor pencil will easily melt right back into your paints whenever they get wet. You can also use a graphite pencil, just a regular pencil, but do it very lightly so that those lines don't show up. You really don't want to be erasing on top of your paint. And if you do that, uh, let it dry for at least a day so it's nice and dry. All right, so we're going to pretend this is the background's already done. And this, I'm just showing you how to draw, get these penguins on here. So what I did, I took a piece of paper that was the same size as the canvas. This also works if you wanted to scale something larger or smaller, as long as you have the same or similar proportions. Now, if this was a square, this wouldn't translate onto the rectangle as well. So the proportion should be the same. So equal parts. So if, and this one just happened to be the same size, just so again, you can see. So if you feel more comfortable drawing something on paper, you can erase, you could do it any way you want, make sure you like it. And then this is a way of transferring it. Another way to transfer onto your artwork is transfer paper. This is called graphite transfer paper. If you're older like me, you might remember carbon paper, right? So it kind of like, works like that. So if I put that dark side down and I draw, it transfers onto my surface. This comes in white and it comes in graphite. So that's another way. Or just draw. I think you should just draw it anyway, just to get 
more practice and uh, it's just fun to know that you did it on your own okay but like I said you can transfer it from you can print out something and then transfer it that way so let's get started here so I am going to use red just so it shows up a little differently so I'm going to just mark my canvas you can measure it I usually don't just kind of eyeball what looks like center points and then I'll do my vertical and horizontal lines it's easier I believe if you put your two little points and then as you're drawing the line it kind of you look ahead and see where you're going with it and that usually helps it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because these are just guides for the penguin just to get a get an idea of placement and size proportion things like that okay so I'm doing my so they should be somewhat close to equal rectangles all right and then we are going to transfer by looking at our paper whether this was smaller you know eight, you know 16 equal parts it could be it could have been this big but the same proportion equal parts then that's how you do this larger or smaller you could do this on a wall on a mural you could your paper every one of these rectangles say would be equal to two feet high so you'd have two four six you'd have eight foot high mural by four feet wide so same thing works with the grid um, system like that all right so let's see we are going to start with let's start with this little guy up top so you can see most the easy way most ways it is nice to kind of break things down into shapes geometric shapes so we have an oval another egg shape and that just kind of helps when you're trying to figure out how to draw something and then you add the little details in the the different contour lines and things like that all right so let's see we're starting up here so on the second rectangle I'm showing right here I'm kind of giving just a couple little marks so this is basically where this this oval is so I'm just going to go like that so now we know that's where our oval is for the body we have a circle for the head we have part of say the triangle without the point and then little little bill okay and then we have so that's pretty much the the shape and size of the penguin but now you go back in and you detail pick out some details that help distinguish the shape of the body and his little arm or flipper or wing they don't fly but you know what I mean right and this little markings I believe they all have different markings just like humans have different fingerprints if you ever get a chance to go to the National Aviary it's amazing they do such good things there too for animals for the environment for preservation conservation they're just fabulous okay so you can see I'm just putting in some of these markings so there we have our little penguin and you can see it's pretty close to this one might be a little bit different but it's art it doesn't it doesn't matter right we're not trying to make this look like anybody else's artwork we're just doing our own thing don't worry about making it look like mine if you ask 10 artists to paint a penguin you'll have 10 different paintings that all look different right and that's a good thing so let's see I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see what I'm going to do here so I'm going to start with the body and I'm just going to put a couple little marks to indicate where I need that oval to be so let's see kind of like in here kind of up in here and I'm just looking at where these marks like how far say if I look in this third rectangle it's about an inch down if I have that here and if I look at the other side it's up about here so you see how I'm doing that and this just gives just a little guide and then you can see so I'm going to put my 
sketch this in a little bit more maybe like that and like I said it doesn't have to be exact so there's our oval and then we have an egg shape right in here okay that gives us the width and then we have a little feet or something like in the shape like this okay and then like I said and well let's do our shapes first and then this is going to start um, here we'll come over here and then we'll come down this way and up into here I ended up getting a little bit closer to the edge here with this one I think I made it a little bit bigger but that's okay and let's see when I was in high school my art classes our art teacher I remember my freshman year a long long time ago she had us cut our erasers off our pencils it was so scary but we had to learn to think about the lines that we drew learn to work with what you did create no erasers but it worked it was it was good so this this I would not paint so I'm just getting these shapes like I say getting these in and then we'll so you could see this is my penguin this will go over here now you'll go back in and you will add the details and pick out the different points that give it the shape that you need I usually paint all of the actual details in with the color and all when I paint but this this is little little web feet just to give you an idea of where things will be as you paint and this comes in here so you could see it, it's coming in a little bit more but it just helps you get it get it going it can be scary sometimes when you're starting with a blank canvas or board or piece of paper or something and this this these rules apply to anything that you're going to draw all right so now like I said I'm just adjusting this will come up a little more and then we'll come in here and most of these markings I really don't have to put in but I'm just putting them in just to show you you can just put some little reference marks obviously these lines would go away when you paint that's why it's important to use a watercolor pencil or something that will just easily be removed as you create the artwork and then the eye their eyes are really interesting too. the African penguins they have pink above their eye I do believe the warmer they are the pinker it is and it's um, it helps them cool off I believe like how dogs pant and the heat maybe escapes through their ears I think Ooh, don't quote me on that but I think anyway so there you have our penguin so it would be so all of these lines would go away when you paint so that's how you transfer a design like I said this could have been um, for four inches tall by two inches wide it's still the same rules would have applied I would just count over three over two down what's in that rectangle just kind of zoom in there and that way maybe it's not as overwhelming you just do it that way and so that's our penguin so we hope you'll subscribe. Like I said, we're just volunteer, but um, see what's happening with our show. And then we already have our guests for the rest of the year. We are continuing in 2025. So that will be our year three for our award-winning show. We did win a f several awards with the Greater Pittsburgh Media Awards and uh, Bethel Park um, TV. We also won some awards out in Bethel Community too. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. And I'll see you soon, I hope. Okay, happy painting. Follow the pickle. And you can do it. It's just paint, right? You can do it. All right, see ya.